I have seen further it is because I stood on the shoulder of giants. This is a quote by Sir Isaac Newton and in this lecture we are going to study about Thomas Kuhn who challenged the common assumption about how science changes. As many of the scientists and common people have always believed that science advances in a cumulative manner and it is built upon something that it precedes. That means if I have two blocks, so in order to make a third block, I need to make something out of the two blocks. But Thomas Kuhn challenged this assumption and he proposed his own theory and discussed about how science changes or how the changes take place in science. Therefore, he rejected the cumulative view and argued that science is dominated by a scientific paradigm at any given time. This theory became very important to sociologists back in 1970s and it was Robert Frederick who published the first important work from this very perspective. Now, what is this paradigm that Thomas Kuhn talks about? Paradigm here is the fundamental image of the subject matter of science. It tells or it defines what should be studied, what questions should be asked, how they should be asked, what rules should be followed by the researcher to interpret the answers that are obtained. Now, in his paradigm, he has talked about two stages. First is the normal science stage and second is the crisis stage. So this normal science stage is the period of accumulation of knowledge. When the researcher, the scientist is accumulating the knowledge that is already there. Now, with this accumulation of knowledge, what happens is that he is trying to expand the existing knowledge okay that is why there are so many labs so many uh, apparatus so many theories what happens is if an apple is falling we know that is because of gravity but what more can we add to this what more knowledge can we add how can we enhance the existing knowledge this is the period or the stage of normal science then what happens anomalies now what is this anomalies Anomalies are things or findings that cannot be explained by the paradigm that is already reigning. For example, if a theory already exists that if A is equal to B, then B will also be equal to C. Okay, So things are going well. But during an experiment, C turned out to be not equal to B. Now what happens? There's an anomaly. Now the scientist has to find out something new because something new has happened and he does not have any knowledge about it. There is no existing knowledge about it. So he need to find out about it. Then comes the crisis stage when there are a lot of anomalies and they begin to mount. This anomaly, this new discovery, it may lead to a scientific revolution and because of this scientific revolution, something new is discovered, something new is invented. The reigning paradigm, that means the paradigm which already exists, it gets replaced with a new one. And this cycle keeps on going because there is no end of knowledge. Even when we are in 2020, have we stopped making inventions? Have we stopped discovering or doing researches? No, because there is no end of knowledge and therefore, Lots of anomalies keep on mounting up and the lots of paradigms that are already existing, they keep on getting replaced with the new one. Therefore, there's a birth of new paradigm every now and then and the cycle keeps on repeating. He quoted that periods of revolutions bring about great changes. Okay, So it is only because of these revolutions, these discoveries that great changes take place. And the important fact here to notice is that all this was discussed in his book, The Structure of Scientific Revolution, published in the year 1962.
Here is also a diagram. You can take a look at it and understand how the paradigm changes to the new paradigm when normal science goes through a period of revolutionary science and again it becomes a normal science and this cycle keeps on repeating, new paradigm keeps on emerging. Now we have understood what is this paradigm and how the cycle works but why are these paradigms there? What is the purpose of this paradigm? What happens? Why is it there? So the first purpose out of the three purposes is it differentiates one scientific community from another. Okay, For example, physics and chemistry, which are the branches of the same subject, that is science, they can be differentiated based on their community, based on the scientific community that they belong to because of this paradigm because of these new inventions and new discoveries. Second, it can help in differentiating between historical stages in the development of science. It can be understood with an example. In the early 19th century, the paradigm that dominated was physics. But later on, in the early 20th century, the paradigm that dominated was very different from physics. And we can understand this because of the different revolutions that were taking place at that period of time. The last purpose is to differentiate between same science on the basis of cognitive groups. When there are multiple paradigms and they belong to the same science, how do you differentiate them? For example, talk about psychoanalysis. Now there are so many uh, theories like by Freud, by Carl Jung. So how do you differentiate between them? It is because of these paradigms of these different revolutions that you can make the differentiation even when there are multiple paradigms. So these are the purposes of paradigm. Now let us discuss some questions. Question number one is theories are part of larger. So you know that Paradigms bring about new inventions, but it is also important to notice that theories are also a part of paradigms. Therefore, the answer will be option two. Theories are part of larger paradigms. It is because of these paradigms that we can define and interrelate with examples and also with theories. Therefore, this paradigm, it can have single or even multiple theories due to which we can easily explain it because there is some existing knowledge available. Therefore, it may contain theories. Question number two. Kuhn argued that changes in science occurs. So he said that changes in sciences occur as a result of revolutions that take place because he said that revolutions lead to greater changes. So that is option is uh, option two. So I hope you got this lecture. This is this becomes an important topic. It was also recently asked in the sociology exam by NTNet, uh, June 2020. I hope you got this. Thank you for watching.